super activist and author Nadina Lespina, and the conversation was so good, we decided to make a part two. So please join us for part two of Nadina Lespina on Ability Fierce. Well, disability is the one I- identity, you know, that... that anyone that, that, can join. And yes, I yeah. said I said yeah. before, the one, the one, mi- the minority, anyone ca- yeah. can join. Uh, and, and so we intersect with all the other groups. Mm-hmm. So... For example, I am, you know, disabled. I am a woman, mm-hmm. so I'm discriminated against as a woman. I'm an immigrant, mm-hmm. so I very much identify with uh, with immigrants, uh, so, and with all oppressed groups. Right, which is um, which is why I think we, I think we have as a as a species the ability to resolve these issues. But I think we need to have some kind of revolution in the way we're looking at them because everyone's stuck in saying, well, you can't do this or you can't or there's not enough money for this or they all have a reason for it. There's but, not, not enough money. I mean, that, that we hear that all the time. But, but, and it's not a question of money. It's a question of priorities. Right, exactly. It's, uh, you know, the United States spends more on the military than the next sure. eight countries or ten countries yeah. put together if we spent some of that money on our veterans. Exactly. Um, you know, to make them whole because they went and sacrificed their well-being for the country. And that's a basic thing. But I think that it becomes, the economy grows when dis- disabled people are included in the economy. And Absolutely. Are living and we, Absolutely, we don't yes. have to spend all this time and all these bureaucrats making sure that you're not getting too much or... That is uh, such a disgrace mm-hmm. in this country. Really, it is. It is is so disgraceful. Um, uh, talking, especially about healthcare, mm-hmm. uh, the fact that uh, certain services, uh, well, the fact that we don't have uh, a national program, and so we have the segmented system where some people, those people who work have insurance uh, through their employer and those people who, who are, you know, the over 65 get Medicare or if you're disabled, if, uh, you uh, and have worked, you get Medicare. But if you're disabled and have not worked, then if you're poor enough, you get Medicaid. And if you need what's called long-term care, mm-hmm. Um, we we prefer the term long term services and supports. Mm-hmm. Um, then uh, you you can only get it mm-hmm. um, if you're uh, um, rich and can afford to pay for it out <laughs> of pocket, or if you're poor enough to qualify for Medicaid, because neither Medicare nor private insurance covers long term care. Right. So I was able to um, uh, to teach college, to uh, save a little money for retirement, whatever, to to buy a little place, be- only because I didn't need somebody to get me in and out of bed. I could do that by myself. Right. And as soon as you need that. To- as soon as you need that, which was the case with my husband, for example. Um, my husband passed away. Um, just recently. Just yeah. recently. Um, then, um, if you need those kind of services, you you cannot get them in any other way. Um, again, Except you know. to become so legally poor. You have to become eligible for Medicaid, and you have to be, in order to be eligible for Medicaid, you have to be poor because it's a means-tested program. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of the programs there are, uh, the benefits that are meant for disabled people are all means tested, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and that's very wrong. Um, really, that's very wrong because uh, it uh, it serves as a disincentive um, for people, uh, disabled people who could work. Uh, sometimes they don't work, or if, even if they work, they they have to limit their income mm-hmm. so that they can still, you know, be within those. Uh, the the limit, not go over the limit. Right. They have to make so much money for 
no money at all because right. if they make a little bit of money, they don't get the help. Exactly. And it, it, the exactly. cost of paying people to take care of you 24 hours a day you know that very is well. tremendous. Yes. yes. You have to be a very rich person. Yes. My husband and I uh, met in the movement. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, we met in the the Empire State Building, you mm -hmm. know, disabled in action, filed the first lawsuit in the country um, against uh, a public accommodation mm -hmm. under the Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, and we decided to pick the Empire State Building mm -hmm. for its symbolic value, not because we <laughs> really wanted to go up on the end. It would have been more practical. It's, it's an to iconic have, Yes, an right. iconic building, right. Um, and that's where we met, and I, had been disabled for uh, uh, practically uh, for all my life, really, because mm -hmm. I don't remember ever being uh, not not disabled. And I had been in the movement mm -hmm. for quite a while. It was uh, uh, when we met, it was ninety two. Mm -hmm. um, but he had become recently disabled with the multiple sclerosis. He had primary progressive multiple sclerosis, which is the kind that never goes into remission. Um, and um, and by the way, it was uh, his fear of um, ending up in a nursing home that really made me want to um, fight, you know, mm -hmm. against the, uh, to free people from nursing homes and, and fight to get the services and supports needed at home. Um, and that's what brought me to adapt, really. Um, and um, And so, what we we met in ninety two. We mm -hmm. organized uh, this big event in ninety three. We loved each other as passionately and as you know much as any you know anybody could possibly more than anybody could possibly love each other. I mean, I yes, it is a great. Love it was story. a great love. Uh, yes, a great love story. <laughs> he, he used to. He was he he was happy about this book that it told our love story too, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, but for twenty years we did not get married because you would have lost the benefits. I was teaching. Mm -hmm. um, I, I taught Italian, you know, mm -hmm. since I'm from Italy <laughs> <laughs> uh, for many years, and then I at the new school. Mm -hmm. uh, I taught disability studies. Mm -hmm. These were courses that I created myself, and I, um, um, I I also put them online. They had a distance learning program there, so I was working. Mm -hmm. I was earning uh, not an awful lot because teachers, of course, don't get yeah, rich. That's another problem <laughs> we have is that we don't get, teachers enough. You yeah. know, you don't get rich teaching, but uh, but I. Uh, you could live. I was, I was, yeah. I had an income, mm -hmm. and I had savings, um, and if we had gotten married, uh, that would have made them ineligible uh, for Medicaid. So they, you had to live in so sin. So we we lived in sin for twenty <laughs> years, um, and finally, when we did get married, mm -hmm. which was in two thousand and thirteen, uh, we had been made bold by Occupy Wall Street. We were, we were so excited about uh, joining Occupy Wall Street. We uh, created the Disability Caucus of Occupy Wall Street. We found that we could bring our issues mm -hmm. um, there to, to Occupy, and we had a, an audience, mm -hmm. you know, there. All the people there that went to, because they were so <laughs> curious about Occupy and so excited about Occupy, everybody was going at the, at the time. I remember Danny saying, I'm so happy I lived through this, you know, to see this. Oh, yeah. um, so after that, we, um, uh, we decided that to, to do it. We said, oh, well, we're going we're gonna to get you off of Medicaid, because at this point, he was... Um, Disabled enough because he was homebound, mm -hmm. considered homebound, even though you, you can go out, but he was, he was uh, effectively effectively with, considered homebound right. because it, it was so difficult for him to leave the home and had to have uh, somebody with him. And, um, and he also was in need of skilled services. At this point, he was using a ventilator, so he was... Uh, um, so at that point, uh, Medicare mm -hmm. um, will pay um, for home care 
but it is quite limited. Uh, in fact, what we got from Medicare was only six hours a day, um, and we had to pay out of pocket Which for the rest. Which eighteen of, hours, really, for the rest know, of the, of the yeah. day. Yeah, um, we were okay alone at night. Uh, um, in fact, we like to have our privacy at night. But uh, I know that's another but, issue. Yeah, when you have when you somebody, have to somebody help, to, it's the third wheel. You, yeah. That's another. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's uh, um, yeah. my my uh, my husband always wanted uh, us to have our privacy. Um, and he knew that uh, because he because he was um, uh, he was a he wasn't big big but just a tall guy and mm -hmm. uh, so he needed he used the male mm -hmm. um, personal care assistance um, and um, uh, so that they could move him um, right. and he got used to that uh, and. Um, and that was an intrusion on my privacy too. Right, you have a strange man. You have in the a strange house. man in the house. Um, so, so at night we usually um, uh, make may do. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean I have the same dynamic. I have a young daughter, and then there's a man in the house to help my to son. To help your son. You know, and she'll hide in her room yeah. because she doesn't want to have to go. And so, it it's a help. It really helps, but it, it also complicates a lot of things. Yes, and, yes. And there's you know, there are many compromises that you have to make. Mm -hmm. You always have to make many compromises, uh, which my husband and I gladly made because we loved each other so much. Um, but um, yeah, but that's a, when Medicare comes in at that point. I guess it's because. Uh, the idea is somebody who is homebound and in need of such skilled services, medical services, and is not going to be around too much longer. No, we could afford to pay. For we it could because afford. It's not to, a that's big, it. Yeah, it's so a, it's not even though it's it's not really that long term care. It's kind of in between. You know, like before you go to hospice. Um, and uh, well, my my husband fooled them though. He did live six years. Um, and um, and um, I uh, was happy and grateful that I was able to keep him at home till the very end. You, know, you, um, you said something at one of the readings um, that you said that you were able to get this level of care because you were an activist and you knew people in the community who was, when I came here to Brick, I met a lot of uh, mothers who are minorities and poor, who don't have, even aren't even aware of a tenth of the services that I know about. And that's one of the reasons I do this show, is so I could explain to people out there that there are a lot of things you can get that you don't know about because the government doesn't see any interest in telling you about them because then you'll use them and it'll cost money. And I don't really know whose money it's costing. I think it's better that this tax money is used to make these mothers could go to work. They're not trapped at home. They don't become single mothers struggling. It's it, it's it's it, it could be a personal disaster, and it can be a disaster for society. And yet, this information that you need to know the right people to just get. That is so true. I mean, when when I got uh, when we got the I mean, and and the fact that my husband is able to get six hours a day. I don't know of anybody else. Right. That could get six hours a day because we went to the to the agency with all the documentation because uh, we called a couple of agencies and they told us, uh, oh no, that's not true. Medicare doesn't pay uh, it only um, uh, only only for two weeks or or a hundred days or whatever three weeks. So they all that's gave a, us different stories. That's a big nobody thing. knew. Yeah. Nobody Everyone knew. tells you something different. Different stories and uh, and we got all the documentation together and we said, here we know this mm -hmm. is. This is how it is. How many people could do that? Right. You, you need know? to have people who, I mean, I, I found out all sorts of things about sending my son to college that I didn't know because I kept talking to activists and kept, but the, if I didn't do that, and this became a full-time job. That's it. If I, if I didn't take, make this my full-time job, he wouldn't be there. He wouldn't be in college. Yes, right. Right, right. And that's not right because these are 
These are services that the, that disabled people are entitled to. Well, I'm not even talking about other services they're not entitled to. I think they deserve more. But I'm saying just getting what you're entitled to is so complicated that if you don't have a parent who's doing it like a full-time job or you as a disabled person aren't doing it like a full-time job, you're not going to get it. And that doesn't leave time for any other kind of job. For having a life and enjoying, and, and, yes, yeah, just, enjoying yeah. your, your son. And, and, and Or being what you want to be. Being what you want. Yes, and for a disabled person, yes, I, I see that a lot, for the, that uh, uh, disabled for a disabled person with, where you're constantly uh, having to, to advocate, fight. Sometimes I think, my God, I've become such a, 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 a nasty person because all I want to do is fight. Sometimes I, I start fighting when there's no reason to, but because I'm in this, in this <laughs> in mode because this mode, yeah, yeah. I know I have to fight for everything. Um, and, uh, and, and no, that is so wrong. That mm -hmm. is so wrong. It should not be that way. Uh, for one thing, as you're saying, um, the uh, um, knowledge should be available to all. Um, and uh, and people should be encouraged to to have to take uh, whatever services are there there are available. Um, people should should be encouraged and, and told what to do to get those services to help. The, um, no, it should not be a full time job. There should um, be like a one stop that you go and say, look. Yeah. This is what you can get, and we'll help you get this, and we'll make this work for you. And right. What it is is you one one thing exists here, one thing exists there. Nobody knows yeah. how they work together necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, yeah. Our independent living centers should uh, um, be the places uh, to, to to give out that um, that information and to help people uh, get. Uh, all the, the 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 services they're entitled to, and supports, but um, but some people don't know that there are independent living centers. Right, right. Uh, so yes, you're 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 right, and uh, and then no matter what, even even uh, if you have the knowledge, then it's a constant fight because it's nothing is guaranteed. Like right now, for example, this one program, the, the consumer directed program, yes, um, which really started in in New York City, mm -hmm. uh, and and when it started, it wasn't even called a consumer directed program. Mm -hmm. Nobody even knew what it was, but that's what we had here um, back in in the eighties, mm -hmm. really in, in nineteen eighty, I believe, um, and now it's under it's under attack. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the, the they don't have the money for it. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. always that, you know. And then there are some people who say that it's you know the nursing home lobby that wants to. The nursing bring home people, lobby is powerful. You know, and bring people to institutions, and this is, it costs more to keep them in the institutions. It costs sure. more than to have them in the community, and it's not a quality of life, though. People even live even shorter the, times in these institutions. They do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Usually we, we think of, uh, you know, being in a nursing home as, you know, that, that we, we think about that the abused, the neglect, but even the best possible, and I, there are some elite mm -hmm. nursing homes or elite institutions where the rich people pay out of pocket to, to a, um, even in those kind of places, you don't have a life, mm -hmm. you know. Um, living, you know, in a, it's like a, it, we call it, we, we use the word, we, we use words like incarceration, mm -hmm. you know, we, we compare them to prisons. Um, and, uh, it, you, you don't, you, you don't have a life. You can't do what you, you can't, you, you're locked up, really. You're locked up. Um, so, um, so that's why, you know, um, been fighting um, to, so, to free people, free our people, my shirt says. So, uh, so where do you think we are now? I mean, since you started being an activist and today, have we seen some real progress? Have we... um, yes. I mean, I, I cannot say there is there is no progress. I mean, since, uh, since if I think back, um, 
when I when I when we first started and had nothing, mm -hmm. you know, absolutely nothing. Um, uh, it, there's there has been a lot of progress. Um, we are much more visible today, for one thing. Uh, in the past, we were either in an institution or at home, mm -hmm. you know, nothing was accessible. So, um, and, uh, and now um, we are more, we are out there, we're more visible. Um, there's, um, uh, there are more of us who are working. Those with more significant disabilities still have the hardest time. Um, again, I, you know, like I said before, I was able to work because I didn't need somebody to get me out of bed. I could get myself out of bed and wash myself and dress myself. Um, so that that's that's a that's a big fight that goes on. Um, uh, I um, I mean I I see um, I mean. The fact that uh, what, what's her name, Ali Stroker, won a Tony. You mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. I mean, when I was uh, when I was a young a young woman, I never would have thought. Mm -hmm. I mean, for one thing, I didn't have I, I can't sing, but <laughs> 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 not nothing but. like her. That's for sure. Um, but uh, I never would have thought of having of having a career mm -hmm. in the arts at, of being on Broadway. I mean, that was but that's totally out of the question. You know, nobody ever says that you can't sing as a disability. I yeah. can't sing either. I do I all the time, but it's not uh, <laughs> Right, it's not I do pretty. too, but you don't want to hear me. <laughs> right, but you know, so that we accept that some people can sing and some people can't. You don't right. get discriminated exactly. against unless you sing too much. Uh, <laughs> but you You're know, too so, annoying. Yeah, so there's different levels of, yeah. of, of reality. Um, yeah, yeah. That people deal with. Yeah, but if you uh, if you can't walk or if you can't see or if you can't hear or mm -hmm. if you're uh, you have an intellectual disability, you know, or you know that then that's a, that's a, that's the kind of difference that's not so easily accepted right. or embraced. Certainly not em far from being embraced, which is. Uh, what I, w I would like to see, I would like to see children, uh, disabled children, being welcome in this world. I would like to see this world be more hospitable. And uh, I think I think that's also an important part about getting out into the community is that when kids meet other kids who are disabled at a young age, they don't have the same prejudice as when they meet disabled people and exactly. they're older. Exactly. Because they, it's, yes. some, it's the unknown. It's when you're segregated. Right, when right. you're segregated, then uh, yes, in a way, it, I remember it being good that to meet other disabled kids because mm -hmm. I was isolated in this little town. Going mm -hmm. back now to, to the little town in Sicily, mm -hmm. when I was growing up, I didn't know there were any other disabled kids like me. So it was good to meet other disabled kids. But it is very important for non-disabled children uh, mm -hmm. to to know to make friends with the disabled kids early on. Um, so that that's uh, that's why we need you know in, integration. integrated. Yeah. Um, and I like the word integration more than inclusion. I think uh, so, yeah. You too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. like those words. I mean, I, uh, segregation, integration, you know, um, prejudice, discrimination. I use those kind of words mm -hmm. rather than... In, well, it's just, yeah. I think it's the same struggle. I mean, it when is. They talk it's about the same universal struggle. universal design, I think it's also yeah. universal struggle. Yeah. You know, it, it starts wherever you have the inequality and you yeah. address it. The word we use today, of course, is ableism, mm -hmm. you know, which is disability prejudice, the, 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 the belief that uh, if, uh, if you're disabled, you're not, you're not as good mm -hmm. as uh, non-disabled. Uh, if, if you are non-disabled, that disabled people are not as valued um, you have less value as a human being, and that is what is so wrong. Mm -hmm. 
um, you may have other needs, um, uh, and those needs should be met. And uh, but uh, but and it should not uh, take away from your worth as a human being. Right, and I think it's the idea we have to move away from is that it costs society something to help people who need help. I think that it's helping a, people makes a, is, it, it's not a cost, it's a benefit for society. We're including yes. people and we're, we're learning about the, all the aspects of the human experience, which absolutely. is different. Yes. I think one of so the much. things that um, impresses me about the disability community is the diversity of it because mm -hmm. you meet people from all races, colors, gay, straight, they're yes. all, they're, and you yes. meet all sorts of people and all sorts of parents, for me more as a parent, you know, dealing with the issues in different ways and you see cultural prejudices and strengths and it, it, it takes you to a, a very rich place, you know, and you wouldn't necessarily want to go there or sign up for it, but it had that's a special benefit that you didn't expect. Yes, I like to see diversity celebrated. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I think we did a nice little show here, and um, oh, well. I'm thinking I might cut it into two shows because it's a 28 minute show. We've been talking we've a been long talking, time. <laughs> yeah, and, and usually when I do it, I talk and I have to cut. Mm -hmm. uh, it's short, but I think we have a nice, a nice one. And um, can I get the uh, camera just on me, not, not to um, ignore Nadina? But um, ah, so this is her book. And now that you've listened to this amazing talk that we've had, you can go and pick it up. It's on Amazon. Is it in the bookstores? It's in in the bookstores. I mean, if you if you're in New York City, it's, it's certainly you can find signed copies still at uh, Barnes and Noble at Union Square, mm -hmm. um, and any bookstore. And if they don't have it, tell them they should them stock it. They yeah. should get yeah, it. They, they get should stock it. Such a pretty girl. You can get it from <laughs> University Press from NYU, mm -hmm. um, and and what. NYU University Press or Amazon. Uh, Amazon, you can get anything from Amazon, That's true. please. <laughs> so, so get the book, read it. Barnes and You're, Noble. It's a good read. It'll teach you a lot, and it's it's a good story. Even I tried to make it a, a story. A, a, yeah. I wrote it like an as if I was writing a novel, but it's the truth. It's my story. It's, it's the my... true novel of Nadina Mastain. Thank you so much. Thank for you. Being here and Thank you. Fierce. Thank you so much for tuning in at home. And uh, we just got renewed today for another season, which is good. And we're going to be coming. We're going to be coming at you more and more. I don't know if anyone could be better than Nadina, but we're going to get more and more interesting guests. And we're <laughs> we're helping our visuals, and we're looking slicker. So uh, stay tuned, uh, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>